Hi, I'm Bryony Kennedy, the founder of Adorn Cosmetics, and today I'm going to show you how to correct your brows using a brow dust. I think brow dust is more effective as it's more natural, it doesn't look waxy, um, it's much easier to work with. So I'm going to show you how to use the Adorn Cosmetics brow dust. It's water and sweat proof, which is great. So you're not going to end up with one brow at the end of the day. Uh, it's especially great for those that have really sparse brows where a pencil would possibly look more obvious. Uh, a brow dust is much more subtle uh, and as I said, easier to work with. So the brow powders that Adorn has come in a few uh, colors. There's fair, there's the medium, there's dark, and there's also an auburn for more the, the redheads. Uh, basically the rule with this is that if you've got dark hair, you can usually stick to say one shade lighter just so you're not looking so dark if you've got fair hair then you can usually go half a shade to a shade darker um, so that's the general rule but each to their own and obviously you know you pick the color that you're comfortable with but at the end of the day the brows are supposed to shape the face okay so it really makes a dramatic difference to the shape and also how open your eyes look okay and it can really make uh, you look a little bit more youthful if the shape is correct so hopefully this can help you a little bit as to how to do this so first of all what I do is I always just give my eyebrows a little bit of a a brush just in case there's any dry skin in there which can often happen then what I do is grab my Adorn angle brush which is a vegan brush and what I love about the vegan brushes is apart part for the fact that they're cruelty free is that synthetic fibers uh, don't harbor bacteria near as much if at all compared to natural hair so it's much safer for you to use a synthetic fiber around the eyes in particular okay so I'm going to use the color called Peggy medium okay so it's a sort of a, a taupe medium sort of a brown I'm not sure if you can see that there and I've just put a little bit on the ends and I've tapped off the excess okay I always like to use the lid to press it into the bristles as well to minimize the fallout so what you're going to do is you're going to measure up your face first of all okay especially if you're not used to doing this this is going to give you almost um, you know a, a paint by number scenario on your eyes so basically what you're going to do is this beginning of your eyebrow should sit in line with this part of your nose okay so if I was to do this it would be there okay and the same my eyebrows a little bit further out on this side so to correct it it would be there okay so then what we do is to find where the arch would go we use this part of our nose here okay and then we run it through our pupil and that's where the arch would be there okay and then the edge of the brow will also sit with the edge of the nose and the edge of the eye okay any further down your brow goes it's going to give you a really saggy looking eye so it's really important in particular to get this part of the brow right okay because you don't want to have a droopy eye also this part of the brow getting this correct can either make your nose look skinny or wide so if you do have a wider nose like I do then it, it's always a good idea to get this not only right but you could also move it in just a little bit not much but move that starting point in a little bit because the narrower this is the narrower the nose will appear the further out your eyebrows are the wider the nose will look so if you do have a particularly thin nose and you want to widen that a little bit then you might just bring this over a bit so that just goes to show how much the eyebrows can change the shape of your face so it's really important to get this right okay so now that I've got my three points on my eyebrows now I'm going to just get some more brow dust and I am just going to at the beginning or the top of my brow draw a line to the arch
Now, if I can do this looking in a camera, you can do this at home because this is actually quite, quite difficult to do it like this. So then the arch, I'm now going to bring that down to the third point that we popped on the end there. Okay, so now we can see there's a shape forming and I'm dipping again and I'm now going to blend down. So basically I've done a straight line there as my first point and I've done a straight line up to the arch, another straight line down to that third point there and now I'm blending it all through my brow. Okay, and if you are a little bit sparse underneath, then what you can do is just do a nice straight line here. Keeping it as close to the brow as you can. Okay, so you don't want to go too far down, especially if you don't have any brow um, or any lashes there at all, then you, it's going to look obvious. So um, work with what you've got and emphasize and correct what you have, but don't go too far out of where your natural brow fits. Okay, so you can see already how much that's given my face some shape and definition. Now if you go a bit heavy handed or it looks too harsh, I'll show you what I do at the very end once I've got the shape correct, okay? So again, over here we've done the first starting point in a straight line like this. And on this side I've moved it over a little bit just because that brow starts a bit further away. Then the arch point, remember, is the edge of the nose here through your pupil. So I'm going to stick that there. And then the edge of the brow is the edge of the eye and your nose. Remember not to go any further down than that as it will drag your face down. Okay, so I've got my three points. I'm now dipping it again. <clears throat> and I am now going in a straight line across the top. A straight line down lots of dipping and getting more brow dust than trying to spread it too much okay because you want it to be um, at its more most dense I suppose if you spread the product too much it's going to look a bit more wishy-washy okay so I've pulled that down to there underneath And I'm just blending it. I've probably gone a little bit too far here, so I'll show you how to correct that. And that's the beauty of me making mistakes in these videos. So I can show you how easy things are to correct. You never need to start again, which I often see with tutorials. They are a little bit too edited so that you see them and think, whoa, I've really buggered this up. It's good to see how things look along the way and if you do make a mistake, how easy they are to fix. That way you're not wasting your time and, and feeling like you can't do the makeup because you can. All right, so I'm going to correct this because it's a little bit too far out and I'm going to just tone them down now that I'm happy with the shape. Okay, so I'm going to just grab a blush brush, you can grab your Kabuki brush from the Adorn range because that will probably have a little bit of foundation on it, which is perfect. Um, and then what that will do is it will tone your, tone your um, brows down a little bit so that they look more natural. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Kabuki brush and I'm just gently, I don't want to remove all the product, but see how that's just gently toned everything down. Okay, so I have got the shape correct first. I'm not worried about how dark they were because the Kabuki brush has just gotten rid of that intensity. So I've wiped any fallout from underneath my eyes. You can see now that I have a lot more definition to my face now that the eyebrows are a little bit more corrected. Um, again, I used the Peggy medium shade. 
uh, and the angle brush that's in the Adorn range. You can also use this as a really nice eyeliner with the same brush around the eyes. Uh, so hopefully that's given you some tips on how to apply your brow dust or give your brows a little bit more shape.